Let's talk about the so-called black card. So as much as I hate Marxism in general, nothing bothers me more than critical theory or what many people call cultural Marxism, especially when it comes to the racial crap. And this bothers me for several reasons. First of all, you know, I'm always being called a Nazi by the left. You know, you're a Nazi. Anybody who disagrees with their policies is a Nazi. Anybody who wants to have a real discussion, you know, they always say, we want to have an honest discussion about race in America. But when you want to have an honest discussion about race, they don't want to listen. You're a Nazi. And this bothers me. And then also I have mixed race kids, you know. I have my own mixed race children. And so this really disturbs me too when I see this, when I see how... So many minority communities in America have been brainwashed with this crap. How divisive it is. How it has such bigotry when it comes to low expectations. So uh, I want you guys to watch this video and we'll dissect it a little bit. There are certain things that automatically qualify you as black in the community. And if you don't fit in, then apparently you aren't really black. Who said that? For example... You can't be black and not like fried chicken. And if you don't know how to play spades, why even sit at the table? And don't you dare say that you don't eat watermelon, which I don't, or you'll get crazy looks like you said you voted for Donald Trump or something. So does anybody else see the fallacy in this little joke she just made about how black people who don't eat watermelon get nasty looks like they voted for Trump? Because the cognitive dissonance is amazing. It's, it's unbelievable. I mean, here you have a video, and the whole point of the video is to talk about how expectations put on blacks by other blacks in the media lead to stereotypes that lead to racism. And what's the one expectation we all know that is put on blacks by the media, by academia, by other black people when it comes to politics? That's right. They expect that all black people are Democrats. And, you know, people getting silly faces because they don't eat watermelon, that's nothing compared to the way blacks like uh, Ben Carson or um, Joy Villa, people like that are treated when blacks find out that they're not Democrat. It's, it's disgusting. Look at how they treat people like Clarence Thomas. They call them Uncle Toms. They call them Coons. They call them, you know, Oreos or whatever. It's just an embarrassment. It is disgusting. It makes me sick. And it is real racism. It is real stereotyping. And uh, let's just watch some more. See how bad the hypocrisy gets. Not fulfilling certain stereotypes doesn't make you any less black. Many of these stereotypes developed because of racism. So continuing to perpetuate them only drives a bigger wedge between us. They allow others to define our blackness instead of letting us make the rules for ourselves. So I shouldn't have to tell you that that is not how stereotypes work. Stereotypes have nothing to do with racism, okay? Racism does not create stereotypes. Truth creates stereotypes. All right, if you have enough people in a group, even if it's a minority population in a group, if enough people in that group do a certain thing or act a certain way that is commonly identifiable, then that becomes a stereotype. There are stereotypes for farmers. There are stereotypes for rock and roll singers, for gay men, for women. They aren't race-specific. And if this was true, that racism creates stereotypes, then a racist could go out tomorrow and say, look, all black people have small penises. And they could use their media networks to try to broadcast that all over the United States, that black people have small penises. But you know what? It wouldn't catch on because there's no truth to it. Claire Smith is an assistant professor at Missouri Valley College who has knowledge on this topic. The stereotype that black people love chicken uh, I think also dates back to slavery days, and I think it was really reinforced by the, the movie Birth of a Nation, which shows some profoundly racist shots of African American people or white people in blackface eating chicken in the halls of government. Jesus Christ, what a stretch. You couldn't even tell that was a chicken leg. It could have been 
a velociraptor was so big. It might have been a turkey leg, too. Look, what bothers me more than anything is this woman acts like she's never seen a church's chicken or a Popeye's before. You know, they're not putting churches and Popeye's out in the suburbs. They put them in the city. They put them in the areas where there's a majority black population or a large black population because that's where the demand is. And here's something that really bothers me about the left is that they are in such denial that they cannot admit for one second that there's truth in stereotypes because that would just unravel their whole little sweater, right? Their whole little sweater of lies and of propaganda and cultural Marxist BS. And stereotypes like this one and others can have long-term psychological effects on black people. Monica Williams is an associate professor of psychology at the University of Connecticut who explains these effects. We tend to internalize them and we tend to believe them. And as a result, we come to wrong conclusions about other people based on stereotypes. We invent these as a society to help explain differences and inequalities in a way that makes people feel like they're not to blame for those inequalities. So, wow, did you guys catch that? Another genius from academia, right? She just said that all stereotypes are just made up so that oppressors feel better about being oppressors. And I think that is so hilarious because it means that we've just been letting black people win at basketball, right? Black people aren't really better at basketball than we are. We've just been letting them win so we don't feel so bad about being oppressive. Even though the average basketball player is making millions of dollars a year, way more than the average white person, I guess we've also been letting Asian people score higher on tests than we have. Um, and we do that so that we feel better about ourselves because we're so oppressive towards them. Even though they have higher median incomes than white people. So, yeah, it's... What do you expect? All you have to hear is that title professor right before she starts talking, and you know it's going to be some bullshit. But like they say, it's beauty in the struggle. So that means we can and should defy these stereotypes rooted in racism. So the next time you call someone out for not acting black, ask yourself if you're truly helping or harming us. So she ends it with that. And I just want to say, I have done a lot of videos where I review these social justice warrior videos and they have a common underlying theme. And that theme is... Conflict theory. They always have an oppressor and an oppressed class. And that's what Marxists practice. They practice this conflict theory. So you always have either economic oppressors or you have racial oppressors or gender oppressors. But there's always those two groups, the oppressors and the oppressed. And I guarantee you this woman thinks that she's the oppressed class, that the black people who are dealing with these stereotypes are oppressed. And I think that's funny because if your biggest problem is that people think you like fried chicken and watermelon, then as the black folks say, you got some bougie ass problems. That means bourgeois, by the way, bougie. Yeah. Um, yes, you have bourgeois problems if you are upset that people think you like fried chicken and watermelon. That's not oppression. Grow up, people. So, guys, you guys can follow me on InfoWars Stop the Purge. That's my channel on YouTube, InfoWars Stop the Purge, and on The Patriot Punk, also on YouTube. Subscribe to both. Guys, uh, also check out the Liberty Network. Old Dapperton wants some new guns, and uh, he needs some help to buy them. So, if you guys want to go donate to him, I know he'll appreciate that. He really just it helps the channel, guys. He does a great job over there. And you know what? I need some guns, too. I don't ever ask for donations. I don't need any money. But if you do want to send me a gift card to Cabela's or Bass Pro Shops, I will take those all day. And if you want to find out how, just check out my Facebook and message me on there. That's uh, Kevin Cormier. I'm out, dudes.